Great. Thank you so much, Enrique. Thank you to the Health Equity Council who have been our host um, for the past year and actually the last couple of years. So I really want to give a lot of credit to the Health Equity Council and the team at the Health Equity Council. This was a creative endeavor um, supported by the um, the New Mexico Alliance of Health Councils, the Center for Disease Control, and um, some of our other local supporters and funders who have supported this effort to create community outreach. It was born out of the COVID pandemic and the need to reach many, many of our populations who are often marginalized um, and whose voice we don't often hear. We have also created a very trans transformational um, line of guests and topics where we take intersections of health across culture, traditional medicine, and all of the different critical family um, roles and tools that communities in New Mexico have possessed for generations and integrated them into our public health talks. So I just, I want to thank all of our guests for being here today and I'll allow, um, I'll allow I'd like everybody actually just to go around and introduce themselves. Um, to our guests and our audience today. And let's start with uh, Dr. Durham, welcome. Great, thanks for having me. So yeah, my name is Miranda Durham. I'm with the New Mexico Department of Health and um, worked on COVID for the last three years, but um, my official title is Medical Director for the Infectious Disease Bureau. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we have Fred Hernandez from Casa de Salud. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Yes, my name is Fred Hernandez. I'm the lead community healthcare worker for Casa de Salud, which is a small but amazing little clinic out in the South Valley of Albuquerque. Uh, and I can't wait to share about all the amazing things that we've been doing um, centered around this community health worker um, collective in New Mexico. So thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you, Fred. All right. Uh, let's move on to, let's see, let me pull, make sure I can see everyone. Uh, Felipe, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. My name is Felipe Beltran. I'm a health and nutrition teacher over at Atrisco Heritage Academy. Fantastic. Thanks, Felipe. Uh, Pamela? Yes, hello, my name is Pamela Skinner. I am with the Community Wellness Council in Valencia County, and we are the Health Council there. And thank you, Chris, for the invitation. This is awesome. Welcome, thanks for joining us. All right, uh, Matt, why don't you go next? Hello, Matt here with Department of Health. Good to see everybody. Welcome. And Matt has been um, part of our, we call ourselves the vaccine team. So we started out. So many of our vaccine team um, individuals are here today. Um, so part of our the role of the vaccine team was early on to develop um, different types of projects and outreach um, mechanisms for getting into the community during closure. And so thank you, Matt. Um, and let's talk with Mario. Welcome, Mario. Thank you, uh, Mario Del Angel Guevara. Uh, uh, instructor of traditional medicine with Dr. Cheo Torres at the University of New Mexico. Thank you. And next we have Larry. Hello, everybody. Just want to say thank you, Diana, Dr. Roy Ball, and Anna for the great work y'all did this year. So amazing. And thank you for allowing me to be in this space with you all. I really do appreciate it. We're in the car driving in Santa Fe. We're up here at the Roundhouse for the Fentanyl Awareness Day. So I just want to say my name is Larry Novos with the Health Equity Council, and I am a personal specialist. And thank you for letting me be here with you all in this space. And thank you, Larry. Thank you for all you do for not only the Health Equity Council, but for the whole community. Thank you so much for you, um, for the work that you guys are doing. All right. Um, how about Chris? You want to go next? Sure. Hi. Welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm Chris Hollis, and I'm the health equity specialist for the Northwest Region metro area here and work with the Health Equity Council also. Thanks for being here. And let's see, how about, and uh, last but not least, I believe, um, Anna? Anna Horner with the Health Equity Council. Excited to be here and uh, excited to hear what y'all have to share. 
Thank you, Anna. And Anna is the co-producer of this show. She does a lot of the background outreach work, um, works with all of our guests to bring on um, all of these great topics. And so we're really excited. We're really happy that uh, to celebrate it. our community mentorship, our very, um, you know, just, just critical roles to the community yeah. members. We don't always see that in public health. We don't always see that in the, the work that we do and these different levels. And so it was just so critical for us to get all of the different um, pieces together and explore. So some of the topics, just a quick review of some of our topics. This year, we, you know, we went from looking at um, long-term COVID recovery, the experience of nurses and hospitals, emergency rooms. We had lots of individuals and community members who had no idea of what was going on on the different sides. So this was a way to bring the community together and share some insight into the different experience and kind of break down those barriers. We transitioned to talking about how culture cures, la cultura cura. So we brought lots of our different um, community specialists who work in the area of culture, music and sound and all the different healing measures and integrate those into health. And then we had a great show with our community health workers and Fred Hernandez here um, and our different partners who, who provide critical services to the community. So take all of these different knowledges and take it into the community to create change. Just really powerful. Um, in fact, from that meeting, we've been able to train other and introduce other um, team members within some of our organizations to community health work. So we have CHWs coming out of the Native American Budget Policy Institute and other spaces. So this is really exciting. And so we can't wait to connect and continue that conversation. Um, other topics, I'll let you, Diana, is there? We had, there, there's so many that we can't even. Yeah, remember. yeah, we had uh, Maria Gallegos from the city of Albuquerque talking about environmental health. That was really amazing. Uh, we had um, our topic on healthy masculinity, which was really fantastic as well. Um, and I think you touched on all of the rest of them, Maria. Um, and we're just so happy to have all of our guests come back and join us and join us in conversation. And we have a really fun way of starting conversation today. Uh, we thought to ourselves, how can we how can we incorporate everyone's topics together as we celebrate a whole year of wellness and a whole whole year of coming together on Salud y Querencia? Um, so we have a really fun way we're going to do it. Um, I don't know if you want to jump into that, Carmela, or if you want to um, talk a little bit more about the shows. Sure. Um, so in just a moment, we're going to pull up our health equity wheel. And this is going to allow all of our guests to share their wins. So we want to talk about and celebrate. And we also want to have, we also have questions um, regarding, you know, what are the next steps and what, what's the, you know, if you could change something or have funding for a certain project or there's something in the horizon, you know, what would that be? So we're always thinking forward, moving forward, right? It was really hard moving out and coming up with all these innovative ways um, to reach, reach our community, to create networks, to create networks of strength among public health, health and traditional medicine and all of, you know, the integrative, all of our different strengths in our community. So really thinking through, you know, moving forward and, and how we can continue with everything that we've built. We know that this year's guests are dynamite and we can't wait to share some of the topics that we are developing from policy. Uh, we have visitors coming on from even, you know, from some of our rep state representatives, policymakers. Um, we have some celebrated authors coming on to talk about migration and violence against Latina women who are um, experiencing that as they move from Latin America to the United States. We also have um, some celebrated cancer research specialists from some of our, um, some of the larger institutions that serve communities of color in the United States. They will be visiting us, you know, providing, you know, different background and resources. And so we, we have a very exciting lineup. We also have chefs. We, we, we wanna think of food and nutrition as, as one of the key predictors of our health. And so we have some creative chefs coming on to talk about traditional food, the integration in health, and um, to celebrate traditional foods of New Mexico. So indigenous native food um, from the state of New Mexico and integrating that into health. So we have a, quite a variety. And I think one of my um, 
which I'm really excited about, Diana, is the maternal health work that we're going to be doing. Yeah, we have a, we've invited a guest um, to talk about child and maternal health and, and at a statewide lens. So we're excited about that as well. So, yeah. So doulas, we may have doulas, mm -hmm. some of our CHWs that do and work in communities, right? So, so lots of, lots of different um, coming on. The other thing is we have art. So we've integrated music and art. Um, so each of our show will have uh, individuals from the community sharing their poetry. We really brought that into that is a very critical component to communities of color in New Mexico. It's a way of life. So the way that we think about art is in, a, in its separateness, but that art and, and culture is an integral part of health. It's a social determinant of health. And so we brought that in and we brought partners to share that just like Enrique Cardial um, did today. So music is an important component. And so we'll have a lot of guests throughout the different um, shows. So very excited um, to share all of that with you. So definitely stay tuned and come on. Um, but let's go ahead and start with our will. We want to hear about everybody's wins and um, we'll have a question. So let's ask the question and we'll spin the wheel. And that will be your question. So let's let's try this. Um, so the first question that we're going to ask is, what was your greatest accomplishment this year? And it goes to Enrique Cardial. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I love the wheel. <laughs> I'm usually driving and listening to this in the car when I'm paying attention. So it's great to see that. Uh, and so the greatest accomplishment of this year is that, that correct? Yes. And so I think the greatest accomplishment of this year has been to uh, keep HEC going. I think. Uh, the, the council uh, was in a growth mode before the pandemic. And so like everybody else, the pandemic kind of sideswiped us. And uh, I think we're, we're doing okay. Uh, and I'm hoping that we go from okay to doing great. Uh, you know, I'm always the, the hardest critic. So you know, for the folks giving me that look, I know what you're, <laughs> it's okay. I, I always think we can do better, and I'm always trying to get us to do better. And I, I hope we go uh, further in that direction now that we're able to have more folks together, uh, you know, in person and do that type of work. Um, I will be leaving this and going to an organizing training. Some of us uh, staff and community members are going to an organizing training together. And so uh, my goal for the coming year is uh, to figure out how to put into action the idea that power is an important part of public health. And yeah, and you know, uh, no one no one caught COVID uh, because of the health council, right? None of the staff caught COVID because of anything we forced anybody to do or any of that. We did work really hard at keeping people safe in that way. Uh, people did get COVID, unfortunately, but you know everybody's been uh, fairly okay uh, from that. And so I will pass to the next person because I want to see the wheel spin some more. <laughs> so we'll go back to the wheel, and Diana will take it away. Awesome. All right, Miss Anna, you can put the wheel back up. And we're going to kind of rotate the questions a little bit. So I'll jump to another question and um, we might go back to that first one. All right. Felipe, <laughs> you're our winner. Okay, so the question is, um, if you could fund a, fund a special project, what would it be? If I could fund a special project. Or if we could fund a special project, what would it be? anything so I'm not saying we're going to fund or we can fund at this point but if we could develop what would that look like not even fund but i think um getting all of the people that are here together um i do run the health academy out of trisco so getting with my students and letting them know what we 
what you guys do for a living, what your job description is, how to get in the field. Cause I mean, a lot of them are taking these electives, health careers, health too. Um, they're taking um, sports medicine. They want to get into this field. Um, they want to pursue a career in health. So I think getting something together where you guys go out and talk to my students um, and let them know how to get in the field, um, job description, all that stuff would be great. Fortunately, Felipe, I think we can make that come true. <laughs> definitely, yeah. We I think that would be fantastic. Partner to do that. Yes, and we're talking about moving and transitioning into in-person. So it would be wonderful to be able to move into, you know, talk and, and, and work with your students. And we have so many great guests here. And I'm sure, you know, Fred, we had talked about, you know, a lot of the CHW and the work that you do. I mean, I think we just have such a critical you know, space where we can actually provide a lot of insight. So I would love to do that. In fact, I train a lot of um, researchers. I have students and uh, from both high schools and um, universities who can come on and do health research and health policy research university level. So we have internships for high school students. So let's talk about that and let's see how we can create, make that a reality. So thank you, Felipe. That's amazing. Thank you, Felipe. Let's right, go we'll back to the wheel back up. our fancy wheel here. <laughs> well, Larry, you're our winner. <laughs> Let's see, what's the, what's the question, Diana? What's our third question? Let's see, we have a couple questions here. Um, uh, let's see, so the, there's a question here that is, who's your dream, dream guest for Salud y Querencia? Pete, uh, he's an African-American doctor who was talking about it, heart, that's his name, heart. He went into neurologist, neurology to, figure out how to fight the addiction and to figure out like map it like how it how it affects the brain and in his going into that research he found out a lot of what we've been taught and told is not real not true and he's very awesome I actually would wish that he would come down just to speak in, in general, I would like to talk about it more. Um, and I'll give you guys more information, but I, he is phenomenal and I really love his harm reduction approaches. A lot of it's what we think and what we do. Um, he's a badass and I really, he's somebody I would love to bring down. He's also, what he talks about is really cool. He's like in his presentation, he talks about that people who are former addicts can be neurologists, right? And everybody laughs, but he's like, I was an addict. I am an addict, right? And so he's talking about like, like next step, like next way beyond just rehabilitation. Like he's, it's so cool. But I would, I would like to have him in, and uh, just I can even answer the next question because honestly, uh, I, today was the first day uh, I actually spoke at the roundhouse. Uh, it has never been an aspiration for me to ever be like that. I'm not that political. <laughs> if you talk to me, you'll, you'll think I'm political, but I'm not. <laughs> and I never really wanted to come up here, but I was really excited when they asked me to come talk about stigma. Um, and it was interesting because I almost called Enrique about 11 o'clock last, last night because I can literally talk about stigma for about three hours. And they asked me to do five minutes and it was so hard for me. <laughs> But um, I wrote down a script. I had all these things. And I told my wife in my head, I thought, I'm not going to do the script because I feel like if I stick to that, many people, stigma is like people can talk about stigma without even knowing it. So they could basically talk about my points and then I would be stuck. And so I just kind of had this whole array of different things that I could say and do and whatever. And it was, it was very stressful for me. It was like, something you know i you know i come from the hood you know south broadway sunset right like it's not my arena but i was really really excited that i did that and um 
it felt good to be able to represent the Health Equity Council and what we do and the good work that we do. So I was blessed. It felt good. And Larry, just to mention again, you were, um, it was the fentanyl? Yes, fentanyl awareness day. Awareness, fentanyl yes, awareness day at the Roundhouse. Okay. Yes, and we had a couple cool. of legislators uh, who talked about getting more funding for harm reduction and treatment because there's, there's some money up here from what I'm being told. <clears throat> And we do know that some of our treatment facilities are under threat of closing down at this moment. So that this is really great information to share with some of our treatment facilities in uh, Rio Riba County. So thank you, Larry. I really appreciate you sharing that. Definitely. Um, and just it, it, just so you know, is to keep keep New Mexico alive. Uh, we're and they actually both. Um, both chambers heard uh, and were pretty excited about the bill. So it looks like we might be getting some money for harm reduction and treatment. But I will have more update as well. Um, I, I'll, I would like to pass on, especially the information of that person that I would love to come uh, um, and talk with us. Or... Absolutely. We also have Dr. Asu Luz here um, in New Mexico, who went from um, being in prison and being a former um, heroin addict growing up in the Bronx to becoming um, Dr. Laluz, who's a medical sociologist and a colleague. Um, so we do have a lot of individuals doing incredible work. Larry, we'd love to you to send any information. And you know that through our commitments and partnerships, even at the university, there's always the, the possibility of bringing some of these great speakers um, to New Mexico to talk about addiction on these different dimensions. So thank you so much for that. Let's go ahead and move to our fancy will, our famous uh, will. And let's see here. We have Mr. Hernandez. Excellent. Okay, if um, first I wanna know what your dream vacation is. I'm actually, I've been actually thinking about it. I, I'm definitely in need of a vacation. I'm sure most of everyone here can agree. Um, I'm actually planning a trip to Iceland, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then another trip. Definitely hopefully. on my to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, down to Mexico. I want to definitely check out some stuff out in Mexico. But uh, yeah, those are the two places that I kind of want to check out this year. Uh, so we'll see if it happens. <laughs> and now for the million dollar question. What was your greatest accomplishment this year that, oh. you, that you're proud of? You probably have many accomplishments. You know, <laughs> there, yeah. I mean, I would say this year was an accomplishment overall. Um, I was actually looking at, you know, a lot of the stats and, and, and all the things that we kept track over the course of the past year, and it amounted to so much. And so, you know, it sounds uh, somewhat small, but every time we were able to actually connect with somebody, that fall within the umbrella of these disparities that we're actually talking about but having a face on there that was eye-opening that really enriched my role in being a chw this year which also was one of my greatest accomplishments this year is being certified and uh getting all that sort of situated and i'm really excited about that too but uh yeah, that personal aspect, that personal experience of being able to connect with another individual and seeing what their life is really about, that, I mean, that's fire. You know, that's what keeps our communities going. That's why we have these conversations here. It, it It's a sense of like social sobriety or kind of cutting all the nonsense about and having these true conversations. It's a little uncomfortable sometimes and there's a lot of stigma around it, but you know what? That's where we live. Those were the trenches are. So that's that's kind of what my biggest accomplishment this year was, personally. Thank you. This year was an accomplishment. You know, I just so. <laughs> keeping it together, moving, you know, bringing, and I think, you know, bringing everyone to the table. And if it changed one life or enriched one life or made it, you gave voice to one life, I think it's so worth it. And so I, I think, yeah, just moving through this year and being able to network. And I think the strength that we gained as an organization, as individuals, 
as community advocates, as researchers and program directors, I think being able to bring everyone to the table, gain momentum and strength so that now, you know, the doors are open and we're able to kind of break through and create and be innovative and integrate and create actual space for health, you know, and talks and real, real space. And so I think Salud, we have a lot of great, I'm going to actually pass this to Anna. Anna, in your mind, what is the show's, in your mind, you know, greatest accomplishment or what have you seen? What are you proud of? Yeah, thanks. I am um, open. This. The sound is, I think, off on the, yeah. Yeah, hi, sorry about that. Um, thanks. I was just sort of talking in the background with Anne about how how much wisdom, you know, each of our guests have brought to the show in um, juxtaposing what we talk about on the show with what we hear about on the news, right? I mean, the news is so fear-driven and creates so much fear. And in these conversations, I think I've cried in more than one of the shows, just being so moved by the commitment um, the wisdom, the knowledge that everyone who has come onto the show brings to their work and thus to our, you know, collective public health effort here in Albuquerque. Um, you know, so I would just say that I've, I'm, I think our big, biggest accomplishments is that we've kept going, we've kept having shows um, that we have Dr. Broyball and Diana have co-hosted um, and really kept, I think what's been, um, you know, just really kept the conversations like casual and accessible and, you know, you guys are doing it your way and leading from your perspectives and from your history and your cultures and that, um, getting to be kind of in the background and hearing bits and pieces and watching this all fold out it's really had an impact on me, definitely. Um, and I think on the wider community. So I'm just excited to, to keep supporting this and figuring out you know, how to iron out the things and stuff, but just the, the conversations, the little pieces that come out when we really get to listen to each other, um, just carry a lot of weight and a lot of impact. So. I think you just kind of hit it right there, right there, right on the nail of uh, the head of the nail, Anna, just because, you know, I feel like these Salute Cadencia shows have been driven with so much information, but at the same time, emotion behind it, which is absolutely kind of embodies to me anyway, the word, you know, Cadencia, that, that feeling of heart, of home, um, it's just really, really wonderful. Um, let's at, let's ask another one of our panelists a question. And I think, oh yeah, we're coming down to our <laughs> our last two names, and then after that, we still have a few minutes. We'll just kind of do a round robin and and see if anyone wants to add anything else. All right, Mario. <laughs> oh. All right, Mario. Um, let me let's see. All right. Um, if we had funding for a special project, or if you had funding for a special project, or if the House Council had funding for a special project, what kind of special project in your eyes would be would that be? Well, we actually have a pretty clear idea what we would like. Uh, and this is me and Dr. Torres at, at UNM. We just went in May last year, we went to the Mexico City area to visit a clinic that has been able to merge traditional medicine of Mexico with modern allopathic medicine under one building, under one roof. And we know that as you were asking the question about vacation, I, I, I was thinking to myself, if I got asked that one, I would go to China. 
to see how they also do it. Uh, because we know India, Mexico, and China are the three countries that have accomplished that, merging, uh, fusing both types of medicine. And uh, Dr. Torres and myself, we are we have something similar, the Center for Life at UNM, um, but it's not exactly what we do, although it's more integrative medicine. So the big project that I, we would like funding for would be, we know that the School of Medicine and the North Campus receive a lot of funds from the state. So we're hopeful that maybe in the future, we could have funding for such a project in which we collaborate with the medical professions in the main campus so that we can offer not a hospital, but a clinic where people have choices on which types of treatments they would like to receive. Something that I was really impressed by in Mexico was that at the maternity section in, in the clinic, they had different choices for women to give birth. The traditional way in that region is in a sweat lodge. Inside a sweat lodge, it, recently, it uh, symbolizes the womb of Mother Earth. And women had the choice to either do an, uh, a, a conventional, uh, people nowadays, they call it traditional, the conventional birth, uh, but that's the conventional modern way. The sweat lodge is a traditional way. They can do it underwater. They can do it standing. So they have many different choices. And we were really impressed that people get to choose how they feel more comfortable for things of this sort. So that would be the project uh, we've had in mind for, well, Dr. Torres has have had it, he's talked about it for a decade or more, but until now is that we could go to Mexico and see it. And hopefully uh, in the future, we could get something more developed. And maybe when I'm Dr. Torres's age, that would be a reality, but that's an idea for now, a project. Thank you for that, Mario, and it'd be great for you to join our show on maternal health. I do know that there are birthing centers of the sort in Oaxaca and other parts of Mexico and have met and visited a lot of these different, and so, yeah, critical to be able to receive both uh, Western and traditional medicine, integrate them both, and treat for things like cancer, you know, even like disease prevention. So there's all these different mechanisms, and I think there, we need to take these different um, these choices and the, this availability of knowledge is out there very seriously in integrating and building our systems. So that, that's something that, yeah, is definitely on our mind here at Salud y Querencia, like how can we integrate, how can we put people together to talk about and to create these different um, interventions for health? So let's see, Anna, I mean, Anna, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have Dr. Durham. I don't think we need to spin the wheel, but we can, because it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to show up with our name. It kind of shows, you know, that we won, right? We all want to win. It's like the lottery. <laughs> okay, Dr. Durham, um, first and foremost, because I know of all the amazing work that you've done and supported with your time at DOH, um, we work alongside you with um you know throughout covid and and all of the amazing things that you've done to support our communities throughout new mexico um so first and foremost i want to ask you what is your dream vacation <laughs> and after that what uh was your biggest win the past year uh, well, I have to say for most of the last three years, my dream vacation is to stay in my house and just sleep for a week. Um, but that isn't very exciting. So I, um, but I, now that I'm getting a little more energy back, um, I think my dream vacation when after I graduated from college, I went to um, Botswana in Southern Africa as a Peace Corps volunteer and taught agriculture at a school in a really rural village. And I've always wanted to go back there and um, and kind of visit that community again. So that would be my dream vacation. And then biggest accomplishment, I'm kind of with Enrique. It's hard to, I'm just kind of like, I'm a worker, you're a worker. We just keep plotting forward, hard to um, pinpoint. So I don't think it's an accomplishment of mine, but kind of a highlight of the last couple of years is just all the incredible people I've met along the way. Um, you know, 
working on COVID and still managing to work all, you, you know, do lots of other incredible work um, at the at the same time. Um, and just, you know, I, I came from working um, as a clinician um, and clinical director at Albuquerque Indian Health Center and, and with the IHS for the last 20 years. So it was kind of a big transition into kind of a baptism by fire into this like world of public health and uh, a pandemic. But just um, what really stands out is, yeah, all the amazing people who helped, you know, who got us through this. Definitely, that 100%, yeah, that 100% resonates with me as well. Um, just seeing all of the amazing collaboration um, from, you know, our DOH partners to our community partners, to our health councils, to our local fire and rescue, law enforcement, um, county government, city governments, even, you know, local stores, donations, I mean, really communities coming together. And I think that really, really speaks to the strength of, of our communities for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Durham. I wanna share one of the highlights that the Salud y Querencia and the Health Council had over this time period. And that was the distribution of over 30,000 um, COVID-19 home tests to communities. Within several weeks, um, we were keeping tabs, but we literally were out there in the community delivering boxes upon boxes. And that was a tally we kind of stopped counting um, until we were actually the city and um, the federal government stopped sending tests to distribute widely. So, but the within our community, within the Health Equity Council and through the resources, and community action, um, we were able to use this space to create awareness about the availability of tests, vaccines, and all of these different pieces, and actually get out in the community and just provide this service. And so I, I think that was one of, I mean, that just made me really happy and proud just to see and be able to put something in people's hands and have that touch and be able to um, take resources to spaces that have been overlooked in the state of New Mexico, in the city of Albuquerque and in Bernalillo County. And so we have many, many locations and neighborhoods, um, whether it's a language barrier or whether we don't see outreach coming from, you know, these different public services to these neighborhoods. And so being able to actually be the person on the ground handing those, that was amazing. And so, um, we created, a, we, we talked about innovative spaces of where, where would we go? Where would we deliver? And we started with restaurants and we went to, I went to restaurants. I went to um, tattoo parlors and I went to places where an entire demographic population in the city of Albuquerque, young adults between 18 and 28 to 30 years old were receiving these tests, PPE. They were distributing to their families and to their children. They do not have access to resources. We found these major gaps through a lot of the talks that we had. And we and I saw that there was a need and it, it did bring tears to some of our community members eyes when I was like, no, this is free. You know, we took to some of the restaurants and we opened it up and it wasn't just the staff. It was every person that came up to pick up were able to pick up, you know, tests for their families free of charge. It's pretty expensive, you know, when you have an intergenerational household and you need to test everybody for COVID and we were able to aid that. So that was really, really important. So we came up with a lot of different innovative plans based on the, the geography of our communities. So understanding the social geography of New Mexico and our cities is critical to executing these different types of of public health programs. And so that's something that I really take, I was really proud of our, our team in doing that. Um, and we continue to do that. I know through the syringe pickup and a lot of the other work. Also, um, Enrique with the Health Council, providing critical public health, you know, uh, restrooms in public spaces and sanitation units. I don't know if you wanna even talk about that. that was to me a huge win. Our team would go out regularly to make sure that all of these different restrooms we're available, we're clean, and we're accessible to all of our unhoused community out there. So real on the ground, it gives me chills just thinking about all of the community that were just in the margins, didn't have access and these critical resources, but that we were able to make 
you know, even a, just a little bit of difference. And so, Enrique, that, that you know, I think that was just a really, you, we don't think about it. We think about these larger, but I, I can't say how, how important that work was um, during that time and should definitely yeah. be celebrated. I think uh, we, we had a small contract with the city. So we actually were out all seven days a week for three or four months. Uh, going from the west side to uh, Tramway. So basically from 98th Street to Tramway and checking on the portable restrooms uh, all along that, that route. So, you know, we all took turns uh, going. Uh, and yeah, and you know, uh, unfortunately that it didn't, our, our process with, with the city didn't last longer than that, but. Uh, you know, I know myself and other folks would, would continue to check on the ones that were kind of close to our house, you know, on the way in and out of places. Um, and some of those have disappeared, you know, they they stopped renewing the, those contracts, but there are still a couple that are out there. Uh, you know, it's, for those of us, you know, who have a, a home with the bathroom, uh, you know, it's easy to take for granted that, uh, you know, having access to a toilet, but if you live outside, and with all the places that had closed, you know, uh, it was just really a big deal to have uh, something that seems that simple. Right. Thank you, Enrique. And it looks like we are coming to, well, we have about eight minutes, but I wanted to open the floor to everyone. You know, if you had questions or you wanted to share anything or comments, thoughts, We'll just kind of open the floor just for an open dialogue. I know we have some guests that have joined us um, and you're welcome to join the conversation as well. And we hope to see you in future shows. Um, join us in public, join us in some of our events. You know, we're all about community. We have lots of different different upcoming events happening. And so, you know, you're, you're also welcome at this table. So thank you very much for being here. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for the space. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. I'm excited to see what this next year is going to be like. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. I'm, I'm so excited for all of the different guests and that being able to reach out and, and create space. You know, originally, I think, you know, Zoom was difficult for us to be on, but right now it's, it's, provided you know a resource a critical resource where we're able to share information so we will have guests coming in from um, the Seneca Nation so it's a, one of the largest travel reservations out in New York City or New York City upstate New York um, so they will be joining us and along with their um, journeys providing outreach to tribal communities um, in their region and how we can build you know, upon their knowledge. So we have guests that will be coming in. We also have Roberta Villaon, who is a, um, a critical a gender scholar, um, extremely well published, who provides insight into uh, migration and the impact on Latina women um, in the United States and moving through so just just so many different different dimensions that we're going to share. So I'm excited, and those are that's just a very small. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but um, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see who else joins us. And as we move out of the the Zoom technology and we're able to move into other spaces um, in person, so that's definitely going to change a lot of that. And uh, welcome to our our guest. Um, what's your guest name, Felipe? Alexander, dile sola. And this is why we do this. This is why we do this for our little ones and our future generation. So critical and important. So yeah, I can't wait. Okay, so our next step is uh, Anna will probably be reaching out, you know, how we can create a show and take everyone to your classroom and talk with students. We do this in a lot of spaces. Um, I know out of the university and I work with a lot of students. So I'm excited to, you know, to move over there, you know, move into that space and share. Yeah, definitely. And we had some guests who've attended, I think almost all, if not all of our shows. 
um, you know, Chris, you've been so great yes, in attending, uh, supporting the shows. Matt, you've been so great in supporting the shows, attending in person via Zoom and on Facebook. So that has been really wonderful. Um, I just want to give you guys opportunity, being that you've attended almost all of them. Is there, do you have any thoughts or comments? Well, well, one thanks. thing that I'll say is that it's great to start without having all of the answers and keep going and figuring things out as it goes. So often we think we have to hit a bullseye in order to start. And we just, you all started and just kept trying and trying and figuring out and figuring out and figuring out. And it's going to get better and better and better as the years continue. So, and then there'll be a podcast and then there'll be a dot, dot, dot. So yeah, great. <laughs> Thank awesome. you, Matt. Yeah, critical. fantastic. Yeah, definitely. And before we started, uh, uh, Dr. Roy Ball and a few of us were mentioning how, you know, we started way back with boxes and boxes of COVID tests behind us and a little plant just to, <laughs> to bring some greenery to the background. And we weren't sure what we were really doing or how to connect to Facebook, but, you know, through partnership and through just and patience, kind of patience, yeah. And patience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we look, I look really, I really look forward to what the next year will bring. I definitely do. And we will be expanding statewide. So that was another great. So slowly, but surely we will be moving from, you know, just here, of course, we're on Facebook and we're face wide, but we will be, all of our shows will be available statewide. And so many of our guests may be coming from our other health councils um, and addressing their needs. Since the needs and the talk and the topics come from the community and come from what's out there, you know, we're excited to invite that. And right now we do one show a month and we may expand that later um, to include a lot of our other part, our health partners across the state. So I just want to thank everyone on behalf of Salud y Querencia, um, on behalf of all of our partners and the Health Equity Council and everybody that has been here um, supporting our journey um, as we move in, you know, to this new frontier and we move to new spaces and podcasts and YouTube videos and, and different things that'll, that are um, yet to come. Um, but I want to thank you guys all, Kunda Waha, for being part of, you know, the greatest part of this is our, is, is you, is our guests. Um, we couldn't do this without you. And so we are so, so thankful for all of your um, leadership and all of the different pieces that, and your gifts, I guess I want to say, your gifts, your talents, and your passions that you have brought to this table, and that you have brought to New Mexico, and that others can join, and your insights will be, continue to live on and be shared, and so cheers, and I'm so excited to see what this next year brings, and you are always, always welcome at this table, so Kunda Waha, thank you very, very much, um, and with that, I think, um, I'll allow, let's see, go ahead and, um, Diana, Anna, anybody else, and we'll be ready to sign off. Thank so, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.